Here's the historical record. Uh, the League of Nations got together because they won World War I. In, in winning World War I, the Ottoman Empire was dissolved. And so countries were created. Iraq was created. Saudi Arabia was created. Uh, Syria, Lebanon, and the Palestinians were put into a special British mandate. In that mandate, the League of Nations at the San Remo Conference said, we need to establish a Jewish homeland and a Jewish state in the former lands owned by the Ottoman Empire. And that was the whole purpose of the British mandate. The Palestinians, the, uh, it's a mistake to call them that because they didn't even call themselves that way back in the 1920s. They were Arabs. They were ethnic Arabs who had been brought in by uh, the Ottomans uh, to work their land. And they didn't own the land. The Ottomans did. Uh, so the, the, they steadfastly resisted a Jewish state and did so for pure reasons of anti-Semitism. To say that they were forcibly evicted is, again, an historical lie. When the, British, when the, the, the Israeli state was announced in 1948, the Arab nations surrounding Israel all declared war against her, and they said to the Arab inhabitants, please evacuate because we don't want you to be a casualty in the war. When we win the war, you can move back. So to say it's a forcible eviction is, again, it's not part of the historical record at all. Uh, I'm really getting tired of the revisionist history. We also see the same revisionist history in President Obama's memoirs, where he's talking about a British occupation. It wasn't a British occupation at all. This was all established by international law. It was all established by the League of Nations and the UN specifically when it was formed after another world war, World War II. It adopted all of the policies of the League of Nations. So this is established international law. Israel has a right to exist. And it's high time for all the neighboring states to recognize that right. Now, we've got something that's happened under the um, current administration, under, under the Trump administration. It's a radical move. We're no longer going to focus solely on the Palestinian problem. We're going to go around it, and we're going to establish peace with each individual state and create a, a new block and a new alliance within the Middle East. It's an absolute brilliant stroke. Under Secretary of State John Kerry, he said, no, you can't do that. You can't have individual peace. You have to first solve the Palestinian problem. Well, when you look at the world that way, you, you end up with an insolvable problem because the Palestinians never want to solve the problem. They don't want a two-state solution. They do not want peace. And this has been the reality for 100 years now. Let's wake up to the reality. They want to drive Israel into the sea. They teach their children that. They reward people who kill Jews. Uh, they reward them based on the severity of the sentence that they receive in Israel for acts of terror. When you look at it from this point of view, our foreign policy on this has been absolutely nuts and has been that way for decades. It's so refreshing to find someone that says, no, this isn't the way anymore. And by all means, we're, no, the American taxpayer isn't going to pay for this. And so we're going to stop paying the Palestinian Authority and we're going to stop paying UNRWA. Well, elections have consequences. And here's some consequences that we should be looking at. Number one, Biden has already said he's going to reinstitute payments to the Palestinian Authority and to UNRWA. Uh, I, I find that absolutely unbelievable. Legally, he's going to have a problem because of the Taylor Force Act and because of another terrorism act that was passed in 2018. So he's going to face legal challenges to this because if any of the money goes to those terrorists, he's got a big problem. Here's the second problem. Uh, he's been encouraged to reactivate uh, the Iranian treaty on its current uh, level with no renegotiation. Uh, I find this absolutely incredible that we would try to bring this back up after it's so plain that they're trying to develop a nuclear weapon and they were using that treaty as a cover for it. 
Uh, this is incredible. For, for Iran to get a nuclear weapon is unbelievable, uh, completely destabilizing to the region. And that's one of the keys to the Abraham Accords. It's trying to create an alliance against Iran and Iran's aggression, which has been evident. Uh, they launched drone attacks against the uh, refineries in Saudi Arabia. They've used proxies against our own troops in Iraq. They have been funding Hamas and other terror groups for decades. Uh, they are the number one state sponsor of terrorism in the world today. Now, here's something that just happened. Rep Representative Gregory Meeks, he's the incoming head, chair of the House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee. This man has real power. He wrote a letter to Biden saying, please reinstitute the Iranian treaty without any renegotiation. I find it incredible that a congressman with that kind of authority and that kind of information would write that letter. But that's what we're facing. That's what we're looking at. I hope the Biden administration, I hope the incoming secretary of state, I hope they all wake up to this and say uh, uh, nuclear Iran is a, is a non-starter for us. Let's go forward with the Abraham Accords. Let's not make the Palestinian Authority the deciding issue in the Middle East. Let's create coalitions to come against what is a quite clearly uh, an aggressive power using terrorism, using drones. If they get nuclear weapons,